Platinum had an early release date for the Curados on the 8th of February, so I've had the pen for about a week. Inside the paper box is their standard plastic case. It's a cartridge converter pen and they only give you the cartridge, no converter. Inside is a little paper bag where they give you the plastic removal tool for the clip. I of course bought the converter. The weird thing is that the silver converter is 700 yen, but if you get the cold converter, it's only 500 yen. I'm not sure why. And then they have the instruction booklet, which is in Japanese, Korean, Chinese, and English. I really didn't read it. I just followed the YouTube videos that Platinum put out to figure out how to take it apart. I got the standard clear demonstrator model. This part here, the thing I call the clicker, is sometimes called a plunger in some diagrams, and then in some Japanese diagrams, it's called a knock. I'll just stick with clicker. Here it is compared to Pilot's Decimo. I've always thought the clicker on the Decimo was really long, but man, the one on the Curados is just huge. What I got the Curados for is to replace this. I know, I'm a heathen, but this is what I want to replace my ballpoint pen with. So ease of use is important to me. And part of that is the long travel I have to do to click the pen. This is a long pen, so to click it, I kind of have to back my hand up and click it and then kind of scooch my hand downwards. The Decimo is the right size for me, both in length and girth, but that clip really bothers me. The Curados is a girthy pen, so here it is compared to another girthy pen, the Mont Blanc 149. And here it is compared to a 3776 Century and a Mont Blanc 146, Parker 51. And it absolutely dwarfs a Pilot Pereira mainly because of that long clicker. And it's mainly the clicker that makes it a lot longer than the Franklin Christophe 46. Does a clip bother me on the Curados? Yes, a little, but not as much as it does on the Decimo. People have asked me about the bump that houses the capping mechanism. Here you can see the distance between the bump and the clip. For my size hand, there's enough room between the bump and the clip to be able to not touch either. If you choke up a little bit, it kind of stops your middle finger there. I watched several videos and tried a lot of times to get that clip off with the removal tool and I just couldn't get it off. So now I'm trying with a little bit of a rubber grippy things. We'll put this comedy on fast motion. Finally, but I still screwed it up because it was kind of halfway stuck and then when I pulled it off I kind of cracked the little nub that holds on to the clip. Strangely, when the clip was on, I kind of avoided it when I held it, but now that the clip's off, I really kind of like wrapping my finger over the top of it and the little nub was starting to bother me. Now back to the bump on the bottom. If you were to compare it to my Decimo, I would have to super choke up on the Decimo to be at the same place where that bump is on the Curados. This is how I would have to hold the Curados in order to have the bump bother me. It's just way too choked up. The Curados nib is much larger and longer than the Decimo's which allows you to see the paper underneath the nib a lot easier. 
But then I realize on the 149, once you uncap it, I do kind of choke up on the pen a bit. That's because the nib is just so large. As far as the finish, the body feels really sleek and smooth and well built. Comparable to the Franklin Kristoff 46, or say a 3776. But the clip seems pretty cheap. But maybe that's the case when you take clips off. And the clicker, because it's hollow, seems kind of cheap too. A really cool aspect is when you click open, that capping mechanism is stuck so tight it makes a little pop noise. Okay, let's take it apart. Push it in so that that little plastic knob goes forward. If you push it all the way forward, it makes the nib come out. Just push it enough so you can turn it and pull it out. This spring can come out too, it's kind of cool. It's just a regular spring and then once you pull it out, the cap stays open and you've got basically a cylinder. Now look for the metal button and then holding the nib side, just twist it, turn and pull it out. Twist, pull it out. And then you could just push the cartridge in, but we don't use cartridges in this house. The cool thing is that the converter fits really tightly onto the nib unit. I've often wondered why more companies don't offer screw-on converters like Delta did. It makes it so that when you ink up your pen, you don't feel like you're gonna lose the nib unit. Jacob of Foodafan said, Athena Eternal Blue is the perfect ink in the perfect bottle. We'll give it a try. Again, the converter has a sturdy fit and you don't feel like the nib unit's gonna drop into the ink bottle. And let's put it back together. Think of this metal outside cover as kind of a collar for the converter. Line it up with the metal button and turn. Then insert it into the spring, line up the plastic button, and then turn. It's nice that you can see the converter through those little slots. It's kind of like an ink window. One of the things I've noticed right off the bat, maybe because I didn't clean the nib really well with a paper towel, is that there's already some ink splots on the inside of the tip there. I'm sure they're there on other capless pens, but you just can't see it. This is a demonstrator, so you can. You can easily clean it out with the Q-tip while it's still wet. Let's try writing with it. It writes smoothly, and I don't know if it's the nib or the ink, but it has a really nice flow. This is a medium nib, but it slightly seems like the down strokes are slightly wider than the cross strokes. Here I'm testing out the ease of clickiness for like a woman's average hand. It's a little bit of a stretch, and then you have to kind of travel down the pen to be able to hold it properly. Again, I'm picking up some ink on the inside of the tip. It might be because we're sitting out next to the sun and it may make the ink flow out a little bit more easily. Here you can see there's teeny tiny side little nubs that held on to the clip also. They really don't, you really can't feel them unless you look for them. There's also some condensation you can see because I took the whole pen and rinsed it out it eventually dries out. The splotches you see in the tip is the second ink I inked up the pen with. It's Pen BBS's Southern Smoke. I bought it at Van Ness. It's kind of a grayish green with kind of a lime yellow golden shimmer. So the next step is to check out the pen with a shimmering ink. 
On the initial run, it wrote fine, nice and juicy, but after it sat overnight, I had a small hard start. I had to make a couple circles in order to start writing with it normally. It's not a big deal. It is a shimmering ink, and shimmering inks many times clog up some pens. But it makes me question Platinum's claim that ink can sit in there for like six months without drying out. Here you can see it's a pretty shimmering ink. It coated the nib and the feed. That little nub that was left over after you take off the clip really didn't bother me. But since I had cracked it a little bit and I kind of want to give you guys every option there is out there, I thought I'd try to clip it off. I just used a small pair of jeweler's pliers and it popped right off. It was fairly smooth, but I figured I'd try using a Dremel. and then smoothed it out. I then used fine grit paper and mylar paper used for nib smoothing to smooth it all out. Pretty extreme, but it was pretty fun. It's really hard to see what that nub was now. Next, I wanted to try a pigment ink. This is Kala's Salute to Neon, Neon Blue called Dude. It's a pretty color, but it's definitely a pigment ink. I made sure I super dried off the nib to see if I could cut down on the splatters on the inside tip. It seems like it's complicated to ink up a pen, but I compare it to like driving an automatic transmission car. At first it seems easier, but then it gets boring. You know, you have to line up the little knobs and everything, but it makes inking up a pen kind of fun. Again, with this ink, when I wrote with it first, it was fine, but then after it sat for a day, I had a hard start. So I had a hard start with shimmering ink and a hard start with a pigmented ink. So it looks like you're going to need to stick with straightforward, non-complicated ink for this pen. One of the things I did find fascinating about this pen is when you take everything out, this leftovers just like a, a cylinder so you could go all the way through it and that's the reason why I ran water through it and ended up getting a lot of condensation in there because it was just like you could just rinse the whole thing out. If you're using the same ink you don't have to take the collar off of the converter you can just pull it out with the collar still on it and then just ink up your pen right there because you have access to the little um, knob. When you've reassembled the pen, and if you've reassembled it correctly, you can see the knob from the converter sticking a little bit into the clicker. For some reason, I find that really to be really cool. So the big question is, should you get this pen? If you use a lot of shimmering inks or pigment inks, and you totally expect the Platinum's claim that you can use not use the pen for six months and it should be able to write, well, don't get it because I don't think that's a, a good claim. If you don't like girthy pens, this is a pretty girthy pen, so don't get it. If you're really picky about keeping your demonstrators spick and span clean, I think the ink in the tip is going to bother you, so don't get it. If you think the clip or the little nub that's left over after you take off the clip is going to bother you, don't get it. Unless, of course, you like playing around with Dremels. If you really choke up on your pen and you think the mechanism on the bottom is going to bother you, then don't get it. Me? I think the pen looks slightly ridiculous, like some sort of elongated corn dog on a stick. And I absolutely love it. I like that I can remove the clip so it doesn't bother me. I don't choke up on a pen when I hold it, so the little housing thing doesn't bother me. I like the nib because it's bigger and longer and I can see more of the paper underneath the pen. But the main thing is this is a true demonstrator. You can watch that long spring go down and you can watch the cap open up and the mechanism come out. You can see the ink and the converter peeking out from the collar. And this is more of a demonstrator pen than most of their demonstrator pens. 
And to tell you the truth, I think this pen's going to be held to a higher standard because it is a demonstrator and people are going to be upset about the ink splotches on the inside, which actually I'm sure happens with other capless pens. It's just that you can't see it. There's rumors that Platinum might come out with a Curados with like a metal body or a gold nib. That will probably solve a lot of those problems. But then I think this pen would lose some of its gawky charm. This is a very different looking pen. It's a very different pen. It's been a long time since I've had so much fun with a pen. Part of the fun of using a fountain pen is just kind of messing with it and being kind of enthralled with it. And I'm pretty enthralled with the Platinum Curados. So my verdict is thumbs up. If you've got any questions about this pen, please write them in the comments and I will get right back with you. For more quirky videos like this, please subscribe. I try to post every Friday night. Tokyo time.